very few cities in this country have an arms factory which is directly owned by the Israeli government in its midst. Pearson Engineering is a subsidiary of Raphael, which is an Israeli state-owned arms company. And it has encroached upon your community and made a home for itself here. But there has been a prototype of how to break that relationship. And the prototype was given in Oldham, where forensic technologies, subsidiary of Elbit Systems, was located. Elbit purchased this Oldham based company for around 12 million pounds. What followed though was the mobilization of not only the community but Palestine action within the factory, shutting it down regularly. Local people in the community of Oldham mobilized outside the factory. They went door to door in the community around the factory, bringing flyers explaining what was being done in that factory. They set up um, a store in the town centre telling people what was happening in that factory. And eventually what we built for the company was an impossible equation because the equation was local stigmatisation, a reluctance of people to come and work in it, people feeling ashamed of working there, an increase in security costs, pressure from the police to try and sort out their reputational problem which was causing the disorder. And ultimately, Elbit Systems, Israel's largest arms company, sold Ferranti Technologies for nine million pounds. It sold this subsidiary at a loss. Palestine action, activists inside the factory who shut it down repeatedly, who were injured in the process, protest, who, in the process, who were arrested in the process, but also the local community who spread information about what was happening there. This was the first victory of Palestine action in this country. And there were more. We are trying to achieve is to bridge the gap between what happens on the popular community level and what happens on the corporate and political level. Meaning that when Israel engaged with Ma'arak and Safe of in 2021, entered battle with Gaza at that time against the Jihad al Islam and killed many people, and Hamas at that time. What took place in this country? For six consecutive days, the Elbit Systems factory in Leicester was shut down. Yes. And what happened? The police turned to the fire brigade and said, please take those people off the roof of that factory. The fire brigade turned around to the police and said, no, we are with you. The police then turned to the community and they said, please, please, help us get these people down from the roof of this factory. Do you know what the community said to the police? No, we are with them. to that factory for six days. This was all part of the process of rendering inoperable the infrastructure of war, of genocide, of ethnic cleansing. And these are rich lessons which we must learn from in order to apply again. Because you see, my friends, we have now entered the phase of imperial 
Israel. Imperial Israel. An Israel which wants to insinuate itself into the security services of even this very country. An Israel which wants to operate air supremacy over the entire region. It wants to bomb Yemen when it wants. It wants to bomb Syria when it wants. This is imperial Israel. What Israel has is fantastical and maximalist plans for the region. It wants to achieve generational cultural change. It wants to remove any organizations which have any form of preventative force. It wants to remove any organization that relate in a straight line to the Palestinians. What it wants to do, with the help of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, is create client state institutions, client organizations. So a new condition of funding from Saudi Arabia and the UAE will be, don't touch Palestine. And you can see it quite clearly from the pronouncements that have been made from the religious figures under the control of the Saudi government. Not one of them, not one of them has touched Palestine. Not one of them has encouraged people to come to the aid of the Palestine, of the Palestinians. And that is on the direct instructions from their paymasters in the Saudi government and in lesser cases in the UAE government. They are to serve as protectors of the Zionist project in the region. What Israel envision, envisions is that the UAE and Saudi Arabia will help to control Gaza. But if anyone knows anything about the history of Majaleen Gaza, they know that is an impossibility. Uh, Israel. that 20 years of siege could not be silenced. You're talking about people that when you controlled the sky, when you controlled the land, when you controlled the electricity, they learned from the Vietnamese example and worked underground. That is the Gaza that you are talking about. No one in this world has the right to demand or to prohibit occupied people from armed resistance. It is their human and their divine right. Included under international law according to UN Resolution 3426. This is a right that ultimately all of humanity, all of humanity agrees with. If Israel is to attack civilian locations across Lebanon, to vaporize civilians with bunker buster bombs, you have absolutely no right to say that the greater evil is those who resist that process. And we have a unique and unprecedented opportunity in this country. Because while there has been a carefully cultivated cowardice, cowardice and careerism, instill at the tops the elites of our community, the functionaries, the administrative classes of our communities, who said, well, you shouldn't really stick your neck out to stop a genocide because you're more important than the genocide. Our people are being decapitated on a daily basis and we fear a negative article being written about us in the pages of papers that no one reads anymore. 
We have to emancipate ourselves and liberate ourselves. Woo! Woo! And liberate ourselves from these attachments. We have to arrive at a state of acceptance and tranquility with all eventualities. If you are in prison for resisting this at this period of time in human history, that is the biggest compliment you could ever be paid in your entire life. You will be able to face your children and your grandchildren and they say, how did this happen on your watch? And you say, well, this is what I did to stop it. This is what I did to stop it. And Palestine Action has, relatively speaking, achieved miracles in this country. The next victory following Oldham was the closing, the closing of Elbit Systems head office in London, in Holborn, in the constituency of the most pro-Israel leader the Labour Party has ever had, Keir Starmer. Shame! Shame! That office was a place where Elbit organized and arranged its operations in this country. But consistent, relentless action led to the office being shut down permanently. The next victory of Palestine action, which of course we are not told about in the mainstream media because they do not want this to serve as a prototype going forward, as Israel's genocidal imperialism, imperialism, expands across the Middle East. The next victory was the British Ministry of Defence in this country cancelling £280 million worth of contracts with Elbit Systems. Why? Because, because there was a problem with what they call operational sovereignty. Now this is a fascinating question. It implies that there were those within the British Ministry of Defence that understood giving Israel access to Britain's nuclear arrangement, this was one of the contracts, amazing, a nuclear submarine, posed some form of threat to Britain's sovereignty. Now this is a creative space which we must constantly press against and bring into question. The next victory that, our, that uh, Palestine Action achieved was the Elbit System subsidiary of Elite KL, which used to make the cooling units for the Merkava tanks, which some of you may have seen on the internet not doing so well, looking a little bit worse for you. <laughs> Those tanks contained cooling units manufactured in this country. Elite KL, following continuous targeting by Palestine Action, was sold again at a loss by Elbit Systems. And what took place after that was in the very same factory, the cooling units today are produced for London transport and for the buses there. This is another clear victory. So we have a model of activity. And not everyone needs to risk jail to support this activity, to support this model. But frankly, it is the only model that has been proven in this country materially successful. It is the only one that has incurred any losses or even inconvenience to Zionist operations here. You see, Israel perceives these bases and these sites as signs of strength. But what we have to understand these as are vulnerabilities and pressure points within the body. There are some pressure points that when you apply a small amount of force to them, they respond like an open door. As Israel has escalated to a level we never before thought possible, it is vital we enter a new stage of seriousness with the way that we deal with what we are facing. Unfortunately, through the last half decade within the Labour Party, there has been an instinctive 
deference paid to Israel lobby groups as if they are representative of any genuine, genuine uh, feeling within the community. They are not. These Israel lobby groups, which help to assassinate the idea of Corbynism, which help to assassinate the idea of political change through the political system, have made clear who they are and who they serve. We have piles of documents and evidence to back the assertion that these are direct proxies of the Israeli government. We have to work very clearly and unapologetically to be real allies to the Palestinians, the Lebanese and the people of the region. Israel is under the delusional notion, the delusional notion that winning war is murdering the most vulnerable, is killing them on an industrial scale. But what they do not understand is when they attempted to wipe Palestine off the map, they rendered the rest of the world Palestine. is that while people die, but ideas don't. The idea of Zionism will die, and our people won't. Palestine lives in you, in us, and continues to live in Gaza, despite the best efforts of Israel over this year. The war will spread to Lebanon and Israel will become stuck in a war of attrition which it cannot win. It wants to take, it has fantasies that it will take control of the curriculums in Lebanon, in Yemen, to re-educate new generations into normalization or at least all conquering fear of standing up to them. But you see, the lesson of the history is that whenever you have attempted to decapitate a political movement, not only have new leaders rise, but the form of resistance has intensified. When Israel killed it, when uh, the British in 1935 killed it, it's the Dino Hassan, the plan was that this would marginalize Palestinian resistance. But what took place then? is you had nine months, the largest strike in recorded human history carried out by the Palestinians against the British authorities and the nascent Zionist movement. And today it's at the point where the very people that Israel are fighting are named after the individual killed in 1935. You do not kill movements by decapitating their leaders and by killing individuals. The same process has played out across all of the factions. So ultimately, do not be disheartened. Your objectives are realistic. Their objectives are impossible. What they want to achieve is an erasure of a total group of people. Almost a million Palestinians were expelled in 1948 in the Nakba. At the time that that happened, the Palestinian population was a few million. Today, the Palestinian population worldwide is 12.5 million people. Israel failed then, it's failing today, and it will fail ultimately. My invitation to you is to become a direct participant in the foiling of that plan.